Before we can make a start on modeling our character, the first thing we will need to do is to create a project and get our reference images in the scene. So let's do that first of all. So job one is just gonna be file, project window. Robot character is a good name, so I might call it that. Robot character. And then you need to choose a location for your project. I'm going to put it in somewhere that I'll be able to share with you guys. So if I put it in my drive and shared, you can see I've already got a third person character tutorial folder. You can put a folder wherever you want. I'm just gonna choose this. You can see I've already got some images there which we'll look at in a second. And then we'll select that. I'm not gonna change any names, just gonna click on accept. Okay, now that's done, I just want to put some files in the correct place in that project. So let's open a window here. So here's that folder that I just put the uh, project in. And these three images here are our reference images that we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna put these, so I'm just gonna go cut, and I'm gonna put them into my source images folder, paste. If you want to use the same images as me, you absolutely can. This project that I'm working on right now will be linked down below in the description and you can get to this at any point. So that's how you can do that. Right, so now my project is set up. Let's go back to Maya. And I want to save the scene. So file, save scene as. And you can see that I'm in the right place because I've just set my project. And I'm gonna call it modeling. Yeah, we'll just go with modeling, that'll do it. Save. I would also recommend at this stage to make sure that you've got my three favorite settings on, which is infinite undos, incremental save, and auto save. Um, I'll link the video somewhere, probably top corner of the screen, so that you can do that if you haven't already. Okay, what I'll do now is change the workspace from Maya Classic to modeling standard. Gives me a little bit more screen real estate. And then I'm gonna go to my four view. And there we go and I'm gonna bring in those source images that I just showed you that I put into the source images folder. So here's the top view, so we're gonna go view, image plane, import image, and it put me in the right folder, and I've just copied the files in there, so which view is that one? Top, so we'll use the top image, open. These images should line up pretty closely because I drew them in a way that should mean that that happens, but we might just have to use a little bit of common sense to get things lined up. So now we're gonna do the front, Import image, front, and there it is. And then we've just got the side left, import image, side. Okay, so they're all in, that's a good start. Now what I want to do is make sure that I'm gonna be working to the correct scale because we want this to just work when we take it over to Unreal Engine when we're done. And we're gonna set it to about normal sort of human height, which is about 180 centimeters is kind of, the, the high end of the average male. So we'll go for that. And the way I'm gonna make sure that I do that is just create a cube. There you go, you can see the cube's just there. I'm gonna open my channel box and I'm gonna resize this cube. So I'm gonna set the height to 180. And then as I zoom out, you can see that's kind of how tall I want my character to be. So now I'm gonna select all of my image planes. Just doing that with a marquee selection. That's not selected all three, has it? Okay, we'll do them one at a time. So let's scale this up. And what I want to do is make sure that it kind of matches the height of the cube that I've created. So uh, we'll do the top of the head. And that looks about right. And the foot. Hmm. So I just need to move my cube down a bit. To get a good idea, I'll just turn this grid off a minute. Okay, need to get it roughly in the right place, and then I can see that this just needs bringing down a little bit. That's about right. And so I can see that I've set my scale to 11.3. I'm gonna round that to 11, because that's gonna make it easier to do that for the other views as well. So that gets that started. I can now delete that cube, and I'm gonna set the size of the others to 11. So this one here is gonna be set to 11. And this one here is also going to be set to 11. So there we go. Oh, hello. So you can now see that I've got these reference images in. Everything should line up. You can see the edge of the fingers pretty much lines up in different views. So do the bottom of the feet and the top of the head. Everything's pretty close. 
So all I need to do now is move these images out of the way so that they won't be in the way when I want to model. So we'll just move this one back here. This one will push back there. And you always want to be pushing them down or back. Don't bring them up or forward because they'll get in the way. Okay, so that now puts them in place. And you can see that in the orthographic view, nothing's changed. They're still where I want them to be. And that's the setup complete. We've got a project. We have our reference images in the right folder. We've also set up the image planes to about the right scale. And we have saved our scene. So that means the auto save will kick in as well. Okay, in the next part, we are going to be creating a cube and turning that into the main torso. In this part, we're going to make the torso and we're going to make that out of a cube. First of all, though, I'm just going to turn off some of these grids because I've just had a look and it's not coming across very well on video with the grids. So we'll get rid of those. We don't need them. In fact, we'll kill that one as well. So that gets us started. Now, what we're going to do is create a cube then. You can see that it's tiny, tiny, minuscule. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll just make it a bit bigger so that it's roughly in the right place and the right size. So I'm just going to move it up a bit as well. And then I'm just going to make some changes to it. But first of all, let's give it a name. So we'll call it Torso because that's what it is. And then I'm just going to start making changes so that it pretty much matches up. So you can see that I need to just move that forward a bit. Like that. One mode that you might find useful while you're working like this is if you go to shading and go to x-ray. It's wireframe, but it does kind of show a little bit of shading as well. So it can be quite good for just getting that sorted. And then I can see it's a little bit too tall. So we'll go for that. That gets it close enough. Yeah, that'll do it. And it's starting to show now that the images aren't necessarily perfectly centered, which is annoying because I put a center line on the image in Photoshop. So I'm not sure why it's being this way, but we'll just have to use a bit of common sense. It's fine. Okay, next thing we want to do is put a center line on this torso cube. So subdivision's width needs to change into two. There we go. And then we can start making some changes to this. So one thing that we need to be aware of, let's just put this onto X-ray as well. There's a bit of a flare here, and we're not going to be able to get that without another edge loop. So I'm going to go to this tool here, which is the multi-cut tool. And then whilst I'm in this view, I'm just going to make it active by clicking somewhere in it. And you can see now that the tool is active. And I'm going to hold control, and that will now tell me that I can put in a whole edge loop. And I'm going to aim for about there. It's pretty good. Okay. What I want to do next then is set about getting this shape about right. And I'm going to do that mostly in vertex mode. So let's put my move tool on. And then I'm going to select whole rows and just scale them where I think I want to. So I want to do that there. I'll probably flare this out a little bit. And the top does want flaring out even more. So I'm going to do that. And then... I'm going to leave, in fact, let's just move this row down a touch. So it's just touching the top there. And then these vertices on the side, so I'm, I'll show you in this view here so you can see what I've got selected and what I haven't. There you go. So I've got one, two, three, four, but not the two in the middle. And that's so that I can now bring them down. Like so. You can see this matches up here, but that's too far out. So what I'm going to do is just bring it in a little bit to kind of go somewhere in the middle. And that is a damn fine start to our shape. What I want to do is round it out a little bit as well. And I'll do that in edge mode. So let's go into edge mode. And I'm going to double click on that edge there. Now holding shift, I'll double click on that edge. And the two on the other side. And what that means is that now in this view, and I'm actually paying attention to this face here, I'm going to round it off. But what I kind of want to do with that is get this face here to be pretty square. And the reason for that is that it will become a better circle later if I make it square now. So that's pretty good. And at this stage, I'm gonna make my first preview of that shape. So if we press three, that's kind of how the torso is looking so far. So it's not quite there yet, but as we add more detail to it and maybe even crease some edges, this will start to come together. So now we'll create the area for the arms to attach. So I'm gonna press one again. 
And now I want what I do on this side to be reflected on this side. So we're going to use mirroring. To do that, I'm going to open my modeling toolkit, which can access with this icon up here. Within this tool, you can see that we have symmetry and I'm going to turn that on for object X. And now if I go into face mode, and you can see that if I select any face, the one on the opposite side is highlighted as well. So I'm going to click on this face here. And then what I want to do is do an extrusion. So I'm going to do control and E. And then by clicking and dragging on the word offset of this little gizmo that pops up, I'm going to put that kind of offset on it there. That's pretty good. And then I need one more extrusion, control E again. And this time we're going to go into a minus number on the thickness to create a bit of a cavity. It's like a socket for it to plug into. And then we'll just double check that that's happened on the other side. It has. We're good to go. I might not have it quite that thick. Let's just push that back a bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so back into object mode. We'll press 3 again. And now that we've done that, that's starting to look a lot better. That's pretty good. So there's just a few refinements that we need to make now. And I'll do that by leaving this um, smooth preview on. And I'm also going to leave mirroring on as well so that I can work on this side and know that it's also happening on the other side. So let's go into edge mode and see that this edge here, put my move tool on, really needs to go up here to fill out the shape. That's working pretty well. And then we'll get this edge here and we'll do something similar to make the chest shape look a bit better. That's nice. I'll do something similar at the bottom. This one doesn't round out quite as well, so that's fine. Uh, but it will do later because we're going to use another method. So that kind of does that. I also want to see how it's looking in this mode. And we can see that it's not quite as I wanted it to be. So I'm just going to bring this out a little bit here. So we get a bit more of that flaring going on. Yep, that looks nice. And then for this top corner, uh, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so now let's put this back into object mode and press 1. Make sure that the shape's not gone too peculiar anywhere. Uh, no, I think that looks good. That will do it for the torso then. So we have created our shape. We've named it, and we're going to leave this smooth preview on so that we know what we're working with going forward. Um, in fact, I am going to make one more change because I want the bottom to be a little bit flatter, I think. So what we'll do is we'll go into edge mode, and I'm going to select all the edges around the bottom like that. And I'll get, I'll leave the middle one. Uh, and then what we're going to do is go into mesh tools, turn on the crease tool like that. And then it tells you how to use it. Select components to crease and then drag middle mouse button. So click and drag with your middle mouse button. You can see that it kind of hardens those edges a little bit. And we only want to do it a bit. That'll be fine. Yeah. And that just makes that a little bit sharper. Back into object mode. Okay, so that is our torso complete. In the next step then, we will be taking a look at how we construct the head. Now it's time that we make the head. And as you can see, uh, I've chosen quite a blocky shape, which means it's a fairly easy shape for us to create. The shape that we're going to start with is going to be a cube. So I'll just create a new cube. It's going to be inside the torso. So I'll just put my move tool on to get it so that I can see where it is. And then make sure that I can see the head in these views, just so that I can get this cube roughly positioned. And then I'm going to need to size it up. So. That looks like a pretty good size. We can see here that it needs to come forward a little bit and also up a little bit. Uh, I'll just bring the scale back down. Okay, that's a pretty good start. Next thing we need to do is reduce the size of the face at the back. So I'll go into face mode for that. Select that one face and then I'm just going to scale it down until it kind of looks right. It's going to have to come forward a little bit and also up a little bit. That looks pretty nice. Just check that I'm happy with it in the top view as well. Not bad. And the whole shape actually, I do remember, I decided that I wanted it a little bit wider than I did tall. 
it's not quite square. Okay, that's a good start. Now you can see we've got kind of this inset for the screen that makes up our little robot dude's face. So we're going to do that by going into face mode, get the face at the front, and then we're going to extrude that and just add an offset, whatever looks good to you. So something like that. I'll extrude again, and then I'm just going to bring the thickness in so that we've got a bit of kind of separation from the frame and the screen. And as for the modeling, that's pretty much done. What we need to do now is work out how this is going to be smoothed, the same as we did with the torso. So I'm going to need to be in edge mode for this, and I'll need to press 3 to see what the shape is currently previewing like. So that's it. You can see it's not quite there yet. It's a little bit too rounded. So I'm going to work on the edges at the back first. I've still got object symmetry on, on the x-axis, so that means that I can select the top and bottom, and I only need to select one side, it'll select both for me. And then we're going to go to Mesh Tools, turn on the Crease Tool, and then I'm probably going to use this view here to see how this lines up, and then just push it back so that I get this same kind of curve, which is something like that. I might need to just move things and resize them later, but I'm just trying to get it close at this stage. Next, I need to control how square it looks. So I'm just going to double click on that edge there. You can see that it's got all the way and it's got the one on the other side because of the symmetry. I'll hold shift and do that on the bottom as well. So now you can see I've got all of those edges selected. And now I'm just going to go middle mouse button and drag until the shape looks about right. And for this one, this view here is going to be my friend. Again, I want to get the same sort of curve. That looks pretty close. Next we need to select this edge loop and then hold shift and select this edge loop. And then I need to get the kind of rounding on the front here. So it's got a bit of rounding going on. That looks pretty close. And then these four edges in the middle are actually just completely hard because we want a good separation between the frame and the screen. And as you can see, we are now pretty close to getting this shape. So all I need to do, I think, is go into vertex mode, and then I'm gonna move some of these vertices a little bit just to get the shape that I want. And I think all of these on the bottom just need to come down a bit. Well, at the front they did, not the back. I'll move that back up. That's pretty close. Now then, I just need to do one more thing, which I forgot to do when I created the shape. So let's put this back into object mode and then go to my channel box. I need to name this cube. So we're going to call it head, which is a fairly sensible name really. Oh, doesn't need a capital D. There we go. And that is now done. So we've now got our torso and our head. We're gonna leave the smoothing preview on because we want to see how this is going to turn out, but we're not gonna be applying the smoothing yet. In the next part, we're going to model this bit here, which we'll call his hips. So let's move on to that. Now it's time for us to make the hips. And as we have done so far, we're going to use a cube to be the start of this for us. So let's get a new cube. Just move it out of the main part of the torso. And then I'm going to name this. So hips. We'll need to scale this up a little bit, and I'm just going to refocus my image plane so that I can see what I'm working on a bit more clearly. So we're going to need to do something like that, and obviously it doesn't need to be quite that tall. That's pretty good. I'm going to go slightly wider. As you can see, these reference images don't line up perfectly, so you'll just have to kind of average out any differences. The front view here isn't quite where I need it to be, so I'll just scale that to get that a bit closer. And that is a good start. What I will absolutely need on this is a center line. So we'll go into the inputs and we're going to change subdivisions width to two. There we go, that's put a line straight down the middle. And now we can start adjusting the shape a little bit more. We've still got symmetry on. That's really going to help us. So if I just go into face mode and select the face there, and then I'm just going to scale it on the height and move it up to get this pretty close. And I'm going to leave this bigger than it is there because there's 
is going to smooth out and that'll probably have the result of rounding that so it makes it a bit smaller so i think that's pretty close and we can't really see it in the view of any of the images that i've created but i do know that when i start putting this exercise together i also brought that edge forward a little bit and this edge forward not quite as much and then if i just go into object mode that's probably going to necessitate bringing that in a little bit like that okay so that's the beginnings of our shape what we're going to need to do next is just work on creating the sort of leg sockets so into face mode and click on that face there and it's going to be an extrusion so control and e and we're going to want to put an offset on this but if you can see it's not doing an offset around the bottom and that's because it's treating this all kind of as one face and we need to just change keep faces together to be off and you can see now i get two borders so that's pretty good there so i'm going to go for an offset of about three 3.5 and then what i want to do is try and get this shape here to be fairly square and that's going to help me out so in order to do that i'm going to go into edge mode and I'm just going to scale it in on this axis here. And that's actually pretty square. I don't need to change any more about that. What I'll do is go back into face mode. We're going to extrude again. And we're just going to go minus on the thickness like that. Put it in a little bit. And we'll probably just put a slight offset on it as well. Let's just press 3 to see how that's looking. Yeah, that's pretty good. Press 1 again. Okay, the final thing I need to do now is just to work on the top. So I'm just going to bring this down a bit so I can see the top. Into face mode and select the top two faces. I'm going to extrude. Put an offset on. Yep, and I think what I'm going to do with this is just scale it in on that axis a little bit. Yep, that'll do. And then I'm going to extrude again. We're going to go minus on, oh, not the offset, we're going to go minus on the thickness, like that. We're going to add a slight offset to it, and again, I think I'm just going to try and round it out a little bit by doing that. Let's press 3. Okay, that's pretty nice. That's close to the shape that I want. So what I'll do now is just make one final change. I'm going to go into edge mode for this, just press number 1, to make sure I set the right edges I want that one there so it's not the center one it's just the two either side of it and it's just going to kind of uh, flatten the bottom part of this out i'll show you what i mean so if i press three again and i kind of want to see this view here i'll put my move tool on i'm just going to move those down you can see it's just flattening that part out and i quite like the the way that looks okay so what we need to do now is go back into object mode and put this in place and see if we need any further changes. So I'm happy with that. Not necessarily happy with the height anymore, so I need to think about that. Let's just do this and we'll just scale the whole thing up. And then I think it's likely to be this vertex here that I want to bring back like that. And possibly this one here just into there. That looks pretty darn nice, I think. Just making small changes to get it to match the, the concept art. Make sure that I'm happy with the shape. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that will basically do it for that. What I'm going to do now is just add a very quick sphere so I'm just going to drop this in here and you can see that on the image there is a sphere there that's doing the connection uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to call this lower back I'm going to drop the subdivisions down to 8 by 8 that just means that I can smooth it out later if I choose to and I'm going to scale it up like so it doesn't really matter if this intersects that's kind of the point of it really like that and then i'm just going to go back into in fact what i'll do is i'm just going to go into object mode 
and I'm going to press 3 whilst that's selected and then I can make any changes that I think I need to to that shape. Same in this view, oh my goodness, definitely in this view, like so. That looks pretty nice and that should just make it look like that all joins up. So let's just, yeah, that's pretty nice. That's going to wrap this step up then. Coming up next, we're going to need to take a look at the arm. Now we've got our torso, hips and head, it's time that we have a go at the arm. To do that, we're going to start with this upper portion just here. And believe it or not, we're going to use a cube. We want this to be rounded like a cylinder, but to make the two pieces that connect, it's going to be much easier with a cube. So that's where we'll start. So we'll have a new cube. And then I'm going to put my move tool on. I'm going to put it roughly where I want it. And then I'm going to name this first of all. So it's going to be L underscore upper arm. Um, the L denotes that this is for the left arm. And it is the right arm as we look at it, but the characters, it's their left. So that's how we're going to name it. Next, what we need to do is just get this scaled up. So we're going to scale that uniformly to about there. And then we're going to scale it that way. And we're only trying to aim between here and here. These bits that come off are what we're going to add. So that gets us started. Then what we need to do is go into inputs, polycube 4. And subdivisions height, we are going to change to 3. And this is the magic part here that's going to allow us to have the two parts of the upper arm and the lower arm to have the kind of elbow joint. Now that we've got that, we just need to round this out. So let's go into this view here. We're going to go into edge mode. I'm going to get that and that and that and that. And so we've got the four corners as we look at it there. Go into scale mode and we're just going to scale it in on this axis here. And you'll see that that gives us a fairly round shape. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So what we'll do now is put this into object mode and we're going to duplicate it, control D, and we're just going to move it over. And we're going to name this to lower arm and we'll be using this later. By duplicating this we know that they're going to meet up properly when we put them together. So lower arm. And we'll just ignore the lower arm for now. Let's move that out of the way. And we're going to continue working on the upper arm. The first thing I'll concentrate on is getting this little area here modeled. So we're going to go into face mode. And we can see that if I select these faces here, it's also going to select them at the back, which I actually don't want now. So we need to turn off symmetry. So we'll go into the modeling toolkit and just turn off symmetry for this step. So I'm going to select the bottom face there and the top face. And we're going to go control E to extrude. And then I'm just going to use the thickness to take it to about there. So in my case, that's a thickness of three. Then at the back, I need to select all of the faces. With those faces selected, I'm going to press control and E to do an extrude. And I need to get the offset right. So I can't go plus because that's going to turn it inside out. I need to go minus. And I'm going to go, I'm following the blue line here. So let's just see where that needs to be. It looks like it's okay at about minus 1.3 for me. So I'm happy with that. That'll do. And then I'm going to extrude again. And I'm just going to make the thickness. We're going to go in this direction like that. And I'm going to go well into the shoulder. Then I'll press 3 to make sure the shape looks as I expect. It does. You can see that it's rounded out here, but at the back it's a bit peculiar. And the easiest way to solve that is just press delete. And you'll see that that will round it out. So this is now mostly done. we just got to find out where we want to crease the edges. So we're going to go into edge mode. I'm going to double click this edge loop there. Hold shift and double click this edge loop. Those two. And then what we'll do is go into mesh tools crease tool and we're going to crease those all the way we want a fairly hard edge there and then those edges there those edges there that one and that one thing so see that's going to go all the way around I want to harden that as well and then I'm pretty sure that that one and that one these here 
So I'm pretty sure it's everything apart from just the ones at the edge. So I'm leaving those. And we'll harden that out. That's not bad, but I do need to do some work on these. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. So we're going to just select those and we'll do the ones on the bottom and decide how rounded I want these to be. In fact, I don't know if I do want them to be rounded. I think we're just going to leave those hard. Yep. So that's good. That's the upper arm done. Now we just kind of need to repeat the process on the lower arm. So we're going to go into face mode. We're just going to move along a little bit here. So let's go into object mode first. And we need to, oh, what have I got selected there? That's crazy. Undo that. Just select this and we're going to move it basically into place, which is going to be there. And then we're going to get this face here. We'll extrude it, control and E, and then we're going to add some thickness to it to get that to kind of meet up there. That should do it. Oh, no, that won't do it. Undo that. That's crazy. Just that one, control E. And then we'll add some thickness again. That's better. This is why we always check. So that looks like a pretty good join there. I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to grab these faces here. One, two, three. I'm just going to move them along a little bit so that they're going to be inside the next piece of arm. And then I'm just going to delete that to keep it round. And then we'll press three to see how that's looking. Not bad, but clearly there's some creasing that needs to go on. So we're going to go into edge mode. And I'm pretty sure that one there that one there so all these going around are going to want to be selected and creased okay so i've got all four of those let's just get our crease tool back and then we'll harden that yeah that looks pretty good but that's making it clear that these here also want to be creased one two three one two and three let's crease those much better one two three, four, crease those. Yep, and I do wonder, let me just crease this top and bottom here. That one and that one, see what that does. Oh well, yeah, I might keep that actually. So that actually creates kind of a, a rounded joint, let me show you. So we'll pull this out. That's rounded on the top and bottom. I think I'm gonna try and repeat that with these. So let me just go into edge mode and we'll uncrease these ones. One, two, three, Four. and then we're going to go into our crease tool which I'm just going to select from over here and uncrease do I like that I might uncrease it a little bit but not all the way that's kind of nice okay back into object mode that looks okay and then we'll pop this back in place that's basically the upper arm completed, or the upper portion of the arm. Now we need to go onto this big heavy looking part here, which I think I'm gonna use a cylinder for. So we'll go for a new cylinder. And then we're going to just bring this out here, scale it up a little bit so we can see what we're working with. And then we're gonna call this uh, L underscore lower arm two, because there are two parts that make this up. I'm going to change the subdivision's axis to four. No, eight is what I want. I'm then gonna rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis apparently. So we'll type 90 in there. And that is a pretty good start. So what I'll do now is get this into place. So that's pretty good there and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit because I'm just kind of lining this part up here then into face mode and I'm going to select all these faces here and then you can see that there's a bit where it flares out so we'll move those faces to there and then we'll scale them up nice then we'll extrude those faces control E we'll add a little bit of thickness to it to bring it to about there 
and we will set the offset and that you can see is pretty much created that part of the arm I'm happy enough with that and I think I'll just end by creating a bit of a socket for the wrist to fit into so with that same selection in place I'm going to do control E I'm going to add a small offset control E again I'm going to go backwards on the thickness and add a small offset again and then we'll just press 3 to see how that comes out pretty darn nice so what I can see now is that there are when I smooth this there are going to be a couple of changes I need to make so I'm going to go into edge mode double click on this edge and I'm going to scale it up yep I like that double click on this edge and I'm going to scale it up and I think I'm going to move it along something like that looks quite nice okay so that creates that part of the arm back into object mode for that this is starting to come together we're going to need a wrist which is going to be a sphere so quick sphere we're going to plop that in place bang it about there I'm going to call it L underscore wrist and then it's just a case really of oh hang on let's just knock this subdivisions down to 8 by 8 and I'm going to rotate it so that the pole's sticking out. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on Z. And then I'm going to scale it into place. So I'm going to press 3 so I know how this looks when I actually smooth it. That's like it's going to be a pretty good fit. How does it fit there? Not quite. So let's just make a couple of small changes. So it looks like it is fitting into that socket. That's not bad. Yep, that'll do there. And now we just have the hand to do, which, believe it or not, we're going to start with a cube for that. So, new cube. And what we will do with this cube is move it towards where the hand lives, about there. And I'm going to have to make some use of my top view for this one. So what we're going to do is just get this to about the right dimensions, like that. And we'll have to add a little bit of height to it there. That's good. And what I think I'm going to do just to help me refine the shape is I'm going to add an edge loop with the insert edge loop tool, no, the multi-cut tool. And if I... Oh, hold control it should let me choose where I want to put this edge I'm going to put it about there and then into vertex mode what I want to do is just select these vertices here I just want to move them to about there it's just going to refine the shape a little bit make it look like it's a bit rounder that's kind of nice okay so that's going to be the bottom portion of the hand then what I'll do is create another cube to represent kind of the fingers they're all going to be one piece and I think I'm going to do it as two separate pieces as well so we'll drop that into object mode. I'm going to get another cube. Let's get this roughly where it needs to be. I'm going to get it to about the size and shape that I want. That looks pretty nice. And then we're going to get the height and the thickness correct as well and I'm going to have this not quite as tall because the point of this is that it's the the next part of the hand so I want it to be a little bit smaller really and then into vertex mode and we're going to set these two vertices here or these all of the vertices on the end there you go you can see I'm going to use my scale tool to just bring that in there and I'll probably just use my move tool to bring that up a little bit like that so that's that first part and then what I'm going to do is let's just make sure I'm naming these so this is going to be L underscore hand one this one's going to be L underscore hand two and then we're going to duplicate this move it to here this is going to be L underscore fingers I think 
And then the shape of this needs to be refined. So we're going to go into vertex mode and do that. So let's bring this down to about here. Let's move this one up to about there. Okay, this bit here is going to go there. And this one's probably going to help me round it out the most to about there. How does that look? Not bad. I think what I'll do with the end of the fingers here is I'm just going to scale them down a bit to thin it out. That's pretty nice. Back into object mode. And then I'm going to use this bit just to give me something to work with for the thumb, which I'm going to do out of two pieces as well. So let's duplicate this. Control D. And we're just going to move it here for now so I can rename it L underscore thumb one. And then we need to do a bit of work with this to get it to do what we need it to do. So we're going to scale it in, change the height. And then we need to work with the vertices and get these into place. So we'll put one there and the other here. That's not bad. And then we're going to follow the kind of contours that we've got of the image. So that's going to give us our first piece of the thumb, I reckon. And then I'm going to duplicate this one more time. So object mode, control D. Let's move this to here. And this is going to need a little bit more refinement in vertex mode. So that one's going to go there. This is going to go here. This little bad boy is going to go there and the final is going to go there. And then if we look at it in this sort of view, that's not bad. That's pretty hand-like. It's just going to need a little bit of guidance with the smoothing now. So back into object mode and let's see what's needed to make this look like a sexy hand. So we'll press three on this. Okay, we're going to go into edge mode, select those and those, those and those. You could probably work this out by yourself if you haven't already. I think you're getting the gist of this. So it's going to be into crease tool and then decide how much you need to crease all of these edges to get the result that you desire. So let's go for that. That was pretty nice. And I do want to crease that a little bit. And then just these here. So one, two, three, four. Let's just crease those as well. So that looks like it's going into the hand a bit. So I think that looks nice for that one. Onto this one, press three. We already have our crease tool on into edge mode. For this one, I'm just gonna select all the edges and crease them up until they've got a bit of a bend on them, but not too much. Same for this one into edge mode, press three. Let's crease them all and then we'll just bring it back in a little bit. And then probably these two I'll crease even less. That looks nice, yep. And now we've just got two pieces of thumb to do. These will be the pretty much the same thing that I've just done. So we'll press three into edge mode. I'm going to select them all, crease it, and then dial it back a little bit. And then the same with this one, into edge mode, crease. Oh, it's not creasing. What's going on? Oh, I need to press three. There we go. Crease, dial it back a little bit, and then... For these two at least, we're going to dial it back a little bit more. And that's going to give us our hand. Lovely. Okay, we're almost done to wrap up this step. We just need one more piece, and that's going to be the shoulder. Which, what we'll do for that is we're just going to duplicate this bad boy here. So, Control D. Let's get this into place and sized up. So, we're going to move it to about there. And then we're just going to make sure that it looks right in this view. It should all be centered because we haven't really moved much off the grid. So let's biggerficate it. Push it into the socket. 
how's that looking I think it needs to be a bit bigger we don't want to kind of overfill the socket it'll look weird that's not bad it does suggest that we need to do a little bit of work on the socket on the torso which I will come back to but for now I think that looks pretty good uh, I think I just need to move that up a touch to line up there mm, I do think we can probably move that up a little bit and maybe forward a little bit yeah so actually what I'll do is I'll leave that as it is for now but as we finish the arm we'll we'll move it all together so that it fits in the socket a little bit better okay that does it then for this arm uh, next will be the leg it'll be a little bit easier I think because we can reuse parts of the arm and we don't need to make as many pieces for the foot so we should be pretty close to done after we've got the leg on right let's move on with the arm complete we can now move on to the leg and as I said we can reuse some of the pieces that will speed this up a little bit so let's just jump straight into it. We'll kind of start at the top of the leg and work our way down, I think. So we'll take this part here and duplicate it. So this is the shoulder. Oh, but before I do that, I need to just have a word with myself. I didn't rename this last time, so let's do that now. Okay, is that the duplicate that I just renamed? No, good. So now we'll duplicate it. So it's still called shoulder, but that's fine because we'll rename it to What is this called? Okay, I think we'll call it L upper leg joint. Because it's not the upper leg and it's not the hips. So that's what we'll call it. If anybody knows anatomy, um, by all means, tell me what that's actually called. So what we'll do now is we'll just kind of rotate this around so that it's pointing where we would expect it to. And then make sure that it kind of fits in its socket, which is not a bad fit, to be fair. Yeah, that's not bad. I think we'll just move it in a little bit further. Yeah, that looks okay. Nice one. It mostly matches up with the, uh, the concept art as well, so that'll be fine there. Next what we'll do is take this part and this needs to be duplicated as well so control and D and then we'll move it down like so we'll rotate it and I'm just going to name it upper leg and then we need to put this bad boy in place yeah that looks pretty nice and then if you've not already guessed we're going to take this part which is the lower arm so let's duplicate that move it to where we want it rotate it 90 degrees make sure we name it why is that called lower arm three i did something weird somewhere i need to go back and check my renaming but we'll call this lower leg like that and then we'll get this in place and I probably do need to get in a little bit close here to make sure that that's lined up as well as it can be. In fact, what I'm going to do is a translate X. I think I'm going to copy it. There we go. And then we can see that that lines up. So I just copied and pasted that in to make sure that it would fit perfectly. There we go. So that's that part. And then we're going to take this part of the arm and we're going to fashion this into the leg piece. So the leg's got a little bit of detailing on, but that's not too difficult to add. So that's what comes next. So control and D. And then we're going to move this here. We're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. We're going to call it lower leg two. Hopefully that naming won't mess up. And then we just need to make some changes to this. So let's put it roughly in place. That's pretty nice. And then we can see that it's a little bit too thick at the moment. 
so we'll make it small and then I'm just going to restore the height to it. I'm then going to go into edge mode and get that edge loop there and with my crease tool just harden that pretty much all the way and then I need to get this kind of rotation on it here so I'm going to go into vertex mode for that and select the vertices and then with my rotate tool I'm just going to do that and then you can see that it also is a little bit smaller so I'm going to scale it in as well so that pretty much gives me the shape I want there then I'm going to go back into edge mode here and I'm going to move this up a little bit you can see that then the shape follows a bit better and then back into vertex mode I'll select all these at the bottom I'm going to rotate those to match the shape again and then maybe make it a bit wider yeah that looks okay so that's the beginning of our leg shape we now need to add this little bit of detailing which I'm going to call the shin pad um, I don't really know what it is I just thought it looked nice so let's do that to do that we're going to go into object mode for now we'll press 1 and it's going to be these four faces on the front that create this for us so into face mode 1, 2, 3, 4 we'll then perform an extrusion on these Control and E and we're going to add a bit of an offset not too much and then we're going to extrude again and thickness won't work this time because it kind of takes it out in funny directions that I don't want so instead I'm going to go to my move tool and just bring it forward by a bit that's kind of nice like that okay so that gets us what we want but I don't want this detailing all the way around it stands out a bit too much so we're going to rejoin it down at the bottom these here so if we go into vertex mode there we go and I'm going to go to mesh tools and I'm going to target weld that vertex onto that one that one onto that one and that one onto that one and then that will help this detailing look really smart so let's press 3 to see what we've got so far maybe I need to change my tool okay so that actually looks okay as it is but I want that detail to stand out a little bit more so we're going to go into edge mode I'll select that but I don't want that one there I'll select those and that one and this one here if it lets me so we'll get those and I want these here as well we'll just crease them together because we want a similar sort of effect so that's the selection we need let's get our crease tool and then we're just going to crease this as far as we want it to so I'm not going to crease it all the way because I think that stands out too much we'll go for something like that I think yeah and then that detail stands out fairly nicely so once we get a kind of plasticky looking material on there that'll look pretty good and so that leaves us one more piece to create which is going to be unique we're not going to um, copy anything from up here this time it's going to be the foot so let's get a cube and let's put it roughly in the right place we'll call it L underscore foot that's a good name for it and then into our orthographic views to get it roughly sized up so it needs to be a little bit wider than that and a little bit taller that's a good start how's it looking in this view not bad but I think we need to bring it forward a bit and just make it a bit longer okay that works pretty well but to add extra detail what we're going to need is some extra edge loops so holding control and I'm going to hold shift as well that snaps where these can go and it means I can get one in the center so I'm going to put one in fact I probably want one there and then on this one here oh, press escape, I will want one that is in the center there and that's going to help me to produce this shape hopefully so now I'm going to go into vertex mode and get these vertices here and bring them down this one here needs to come down a little bit this one here also could do with coming down but not too much that's okay there and then we can see here oh, we've got some changes that need to be made so that's going to come down that middle one can stay there this one's going to come up and move in a little bit yeah that looks not too bad let's press three not bad so we need to crease some edges now to get this to sort of hold its shape I'm just going to move that up a little bit and then these two together I'll just bring forward a touch 
and maybe these two here I'll bring back just a tiny bit like that. So now I'm going to go into edge mode and we're going to do the ones all the way around the front, around the top rather. So we'll get those. I'm going to press number three to see what my creasing is going to do. Go to mesh tools, crease tool, and then not quite crease all the way. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to repeat that on the bottom because I need the bottom to be flat. So I'm going to get all of those and I probably want these as well to try and get it as flat as possible. So then we'll crease that all the way. Yep, that looks good. And that is our foot, I think. I think what I'll do is just bring that one there. In fact, I'm just going to have to move the whole shape down to do this. I want to round the top off a little bit more. So I'm going to get that edge there and that edge there and just bring those up ever so slightly. And then make sure that the overlap isn't too much between the foot and the lower leg. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So let's just go into vertex mode now and make any final changes. So I don't want it to be too tall. Uh, I think this vertex here can come back a bit because it's causing the shape not to look my favorite. Yeah, that'll do it, right. Back into object mode, we will leave all of the smoothing on for now. Okay, that does it for most of the tricky to model pieces. In the next step, what we will do is the finishing touches. So we'll smooth things, we will mirror them over, we'll add the antenna, get everything generally ready to go for UV mapping and texturing. So I'll see you in the next part. This step is all about getting the modeling finished. And I think we'll start with getting a little antenna on the head of our little chap. That's gonna be nice and straightforward. We're gonna start with a cylinder. So I'll just create a new cylinder. And then let's move this up like so. I want to drop the subdivisions on the axis. We're gonna knock that down to about mm, 16. Should be nice. I still want this to look quite round. There it is. And now what we need to do is get this positioned. So in my top view, here we go. If I just put that into wireframe, I can see that I had that positioned about there. And it looks like I had it slightly wider as well. Only slightly. Okay. And then in this view here, it looks like I'm quite close actually. And we need to just get that positioned about there I believe and then you can see here that that's still above the mesh so it's going to have to go down slightly more like that to make sure that it intersects. Then what we're going to do is we're going to name this antenna and we'll make our changes. So the first thing we need to do is go into face mode and we're going to select all the faces on the top like so and then we're going to extrude them, add a slight offset like that, that looks good. And then we'll extrude again and we'll add a bit of thickness just to bring it up a bit. And then we'll extrude again, we'll add another offset. This is going to be slightly more because it's going to be the thickness of the, the antenna itself. And then we'll extrude again, this is going to give us the height. So we're going to need to look at this view this time. So let's raise the thickness to about there. That looks good. Make sure that we can see the top of this. We'll extrude again. And we're gonna add thickness again, like that. And then we're gonna select this face. I'm holding shift, double click on the next one to get the whole edge loop. We'll extrude and we'll add a bit of thickness to that. And that's just gonna Add that bit of detail to the top. Okay, that's the antenna done. Pretty darn good, that will do nicely. Next, what we need to do is attach the head to the torso. We're gonna to create a little neck for that. And that's actually just gonna be two metallic looking cylinders. We're gonna let the, uh, the audience imagine how exactly the head is attached and how it moves around. We're gonna keep it simple. So we'll start with another cylinder and I'm going to put the 
subdivisions on the axis to 16 again. 16 is a nice number. Put my move tool on, and then we need to just sort of get this in place. So in this view now, what I want to do is just turn on the grid, because I want to know, I'm going to take this off center, but I don't want to take it too far off center. So let's just make this slightly taller. It needs to intersect the torso and the head, that'll do. And then we're going to move it off to the side, just slightly. And then I'm going to duplicate that. In fact, I'll name it first. We'll call it neck one. That's it. That was a good catch. Duplicate it. Move it over. And I just want this one to be slightly thinner for no real reason. Just to add a bit of visual variety. So let's scale that up as well. So those are going to be our two neck pieces. That'll do nicely. Those are the last things that we need to model then. Now what we need to do is just the finishing touches to get this ready to be mirrored. And the first thing I want to do for that is to just reposition the arm. It's not quite in the socket as I would like it to be. So I'm going to select all pieces of the arm like that. And then we need to get this positioned. So if we have a look in this view here, we can see here's the socket. Let's just kill the grid again. Here's the socket and this is just not sitting within the socket. So we'll just move that up a little bit. That looks pretty good. So that should now be sitting within the socket. And I think we can't really see it in this view now. But this view here shows that it needs to come forward a bit as well. So we'll bring it forward just so that it's sitting a bit more central within that socket. Yeah, that'll do it. So I'm now happy with the position of that. Next thing I want to change is I want a bit of overlap in these hand pieces so that there's not the gap between them. Uh, and then again, the audience, whoever's looking at it, will just assume that these are somehow joined. Um, we'll let their imagination do the hard work so we don't have to. So I'm just joining these up, just get a bit of overlap. That will be sweet. Beautiful, okay, we've got that. And then finally, I just want to make sure that I'm happy with the naming of the arm, because we've got L underscore lower arm, and then for some reason L underscore lower arm too, which I don't like, that's really uneven. So I'm going to add a 1 to this, so the naming's a bit more consistent. Right, now that we've made those finishing touches, the next thing we need to do is to smooth our geometry. Because at the moment it isn't smoothed. If I show you what I mean, I'll select everything. We'll press 1. This is how our geometry actually looks. And if we were to import this into Unreal Engine now, even with the smooth preview on, this is how it would come through. So we need to make these changes. We'll start with the head then. And I think I'll just switch into my large perspective view for this. Okay, what we're gonna do is go to Mesh and Smooth. And you can see that it smooths it, and it tells us that we've done this once. We've subdivided by one. Uh, and it's still too square. So if we now just click and drag on that to two, that is much more like the shape that we had in mind. But for this one, specifically, because I want the head to look smooth, I'm actually gonna take it up to three. This is the only piece I'm gonna do this with, uh, but I do want that. So there we go, that's the head done. Right, we'll do the torso next. So there's the torso selected. And instead of going into the menu, I'm just gonna click on this icon here for smooth, click on that. And this one's just gonna get two divisions, there we go. Okay, this piece here just needs one, as does this piece here, because these are already fairly smooth. So we'll just give them one each. And then everything else along the arm kind of needs two. So we'll smooth it and then give it two divisions. This one here, we'll smooth it and give it two divisions. Yeah, that's pretty nice. This piece here, smooth it two divisions, and then all the hand pieces need the same, so smooth two divisions. Otherwise, we don't get the, the shape that we want, especially like this overlap and the rounding out just won't come through on the hands. So we'll get all of these. Okay, that's the arm done. Let's do the, what do we call it, the hips. So we'll smooth that, and we'll give it two divisions. This socket here, uh, or the, the joint that goes into the socket, just needs one. 
this is going to have two this is going to have two this is definitely going to have two and the foot will have two as well just to keep it fairly simple and then just this little bit here that allows that to move around we're going to add one division to that okay so now all the smoothing is done I think I'm going to make one more change I think the neck looks a little bit too much so to remedy that I'm just going to move the head down slightly make him look a bit stumpier yeah that's pretty good okay what we need to do now then is get this left arm and this left leg to duplicate over onto the right hand side there are multiple ways that we can do this but I'm going to do it in the way that I prefer so I'm going to select all pieces of the arm there I'm also going to hold shift and select all the pieces of the leg and these have all got different pivot points I need them to have one pivot point that is exactly on the center of the grid so to do that I'm just going to group them like so and you can see they're all selected now but more importantly if we go into this center view here they all share a common pivot point which is bang on the center of the grid and this is another reason that when we've been modeling we've only used the image as a rough guide because we wanted to be able to mirror this later so we've made sure that the model is on the center line and haven't worried too much about the image that's just been there to guide us so now that we've got that selected then what we will do is go to edit duplicate special and we'll click on the little settings box I'll just move this over here so you can see the effect when we do this we want to copy we are going to group it on the parent and then yours will probably be set to this so 111 and we want the scale on X to be minus one like so and that's it when you click on apply it will duplicate everything over and you're all good and what's also good about this is that now what we can do let's just turn that grid off so it doesn't get too distracting is just rename everything so it's kept the exact name so you can see this here is called L underscore shoulder this here is also called L underscore shoulder which actually until today I didn't think Maya would let you do I think it's because they're grouped that it's allowing them to have the same name and that helps us with renaming so what we'll do is we'll select everything on this side not the head though so we've got all pieces of the arm so I haven't selected the group now I've selected the individual pieces and then we'll do that with the leg yeah and we're just going to rename these all in one go to do that we're going to go into modify and then we'll click on what will we click on search and replace names so we'll click on that and let me delete these so you can see who I'm putting it in so we did name these really specifically everything starts with L underscore it wasn't L space it was L underscore and that's because if we just replace the L then it will replace all the L's so we need something a bit more unique than that which is going to be L underscore so whenever it sees L underscore it's going to replace it with R underscore like that and then we can just click on replace and now if we click on any of these we've got R underscore shoulder R underscore upper arm R underscore lower arm one uh, let's do a leg piece R underscore lower leg two so it's now all perfectly renamed as well isn't that grand so we'll just do now a couple more finishing touches before we can wrap up this step so the first thing I want to do is just get all those pieces we just put into groups out of their groups so for that we're going to go to Windows Outliner you can see here are our groups so we'll click on the name of the group and then we'll go to edit ungroup and they are now no longer grouped and we'll do the same for group two edit ungroup and now everything is all back as separate pieces and now what we're going to do is just delete the history and freeze the transformations which is good practice on anything that you model really so let's select all of the different pieces of mesh we're going to do modify freeze transformations and then we'll just check that that worked on everything everything should be zeroed out uh, or have one on the scale yep that's all worked and then we're going to do edit delete all by type history and we'll know that that's worked because underneath this section here now there'll be nothing listed uh, which there isn't so I'm just gonna disappear the outliner 
And that is the modeling done. We have completed chapter one. In chapter two, we'll be looking at getting some basic materials on this guy, as well as a bit of UV mapping on the head so that we can texture the eyes on there. So I look forward to seeing you for chapter two. I'm able to continue making these videos thanks to the ongoing support of my amazing patron community. If you'd also like to support Game Dev Academy via Patreon, then check out the link in the description below. Thank you.